back in the build up to TBC, I did a video which was a deep dive. I didn't think it was that deep into all the key reputations that you need to know. Recently, I've been getting a lot of comments asking if I'm going to do the same for Wrath of the Lich King. So that's what we're doing today. There will be a second part to this video, which will be coming in the next couple of weeks, where I give you my thoughts on each class and spec and which order they should do the reputations in. We will start with Sons of Hodir, purely because irrespective of what you play, you're going to want Sons of Hodir for the shoulder enchants. I don't know why I felt the need to actually point on my shoulder, but you know what I mean. So starting with Sons of Hodir, which by the way, you'll have to do dailies or farm a specific item called Relic of Alduar, which you can buy from the auction house and repeatedly hand in to get reputation with these guys. You can't wear a tabard and farm heroics. So that's how you get the other reputations. You get to friendly, you can buy a tabard that you put on, and whenever you're doing level 80 dungeons or heroic dungeons, you'll gain reputation with that faction. Sons of Hodir doesn't work like that. But once you reach Honored, there's some leather shoulders, which are 187 eye level. So it's only 13 lower than heroic dungeons with some haste and attack power on. You've got the giant ring belt, which is a male belt with agility, stamina, intellect, a decent amount of attack power and some crit. If you're level working and you want to be able to make the 32 slot mining bag, you can get the mammoth mining bag recipe at Honored with these guys. There's a 25 frost resist and 30 stamina head enchant called Arcanum of the Frosty Soul. And then finally, you've got your four different shoulder enchants, 30 attack power and 10 crit for attack power users, 18 spell power and five mana per five for healers, 15 dodge and 10 defense for tanks and 18 spell power and 10 crit for the caster dps there's two different types of mounts it shows two but that's purely because one is for alliance and one is for horde it's not a multi-person mount and it doesn't have vendors it's literally just a mammoth mount also at revered you can start to get 200 eye level gear which is the same as what comes from heroics so you can get leather legs with crit and spell power some plate shoulders with crit a decent amount of strength and stamina broken stalactite which is a 1.8 speed dagger with 26 agility crit hit and attack power Power, and a one-handed axe which is nice and slow with 2.6 speed stamina crit armor pen and attack power At exalted is when you get your multi-person mount so reigns of the grand ice mammoth can carry two passengers but this isn't the same as the one you buy for 16,000 gold in dalaran which can carry two passengers but it also carries vendors this is just for carrying passengers you also get the 16 critical strike rate in gem if you're a jewel crafter and if you're a tailor, you get access to the pattern for the glacial bag, which is the 22 slot bag recipe. Not recipe, pattern. Pattern? Pattern. And then the bigger version for your shoulder enchants. So for the attack power users, you now get 40 attack power and 15 crit. 24 spell power and 8 mana per 5 for the healers. 20 dodge and 15 defense for the tanks. And 24 spell power and 15 crit for the caster DPS. So for Alliance Vanguard, you'll get reputation with these when you're questing. And you'll also get reputation from doing heroics and level 80 dungeons wearing no tabard so for these you get some slightly lower eye level gear which is only 166 at revered and this is more for leveling rather than worrying about an end game but going over them briefly we've got an offhand with haste and spell power we've got a very fast speed dagger with attack power agility and stamina we've got a tanking weapon with 22 dodge rating some stamina and strength we've got a healing shield with spell power decent amount of intellect and stamina a tanking shield with expertise and defense a gun with some hit rating on and a spell power wand with intellect and spirit which actually the wand is isn't too bad but none of these you're really going to be that bothered about the item level on them for the reputation required quite low to be fair but at exalted which you are going to want if you're an engineer is the schematic for the mech engineers chopper because everyone likes riding around on a motorbike with their friend you also get the titanium plating from this if you're a blacksmith which permanently enchants a lightweight titanium plating to a shield increasing block value by 81 and reducing the duration of disarm effects by 50%. Finally, if you're a PvPer, you're going to get a 30 stamina enchant on the head and 25 resilience. I say if you're a PvPer, even as a tank, you might consider using this. For Horde Expedition, it's the same way of obtaining the reputation. Some of the items are slightly renamed, and it's like a bow now instead of a gun, but they're mostly the same. And schematic-wise, you get the Meccano Hog recipe, which is the Horde equivalent. You still get your Titanium plating, and you get the same head enchant. For the Kaluak, again, there's quite a lot here in terms of items, but most of them are not worth worrying about because they're only 166 eye level. By the time you actually get the reputation with the Kaluak, you're not going to be wanting to use any of these items, really. But the important things like patterns, such as Dragon Scout Ammo Pouch, is a 28 slot ammo pouch which requires Honored with the Kaluak and obviously a level worker to make. There's a few green gems like the Parry and Stamina gem or the Sears gem at Friendly, which is Intellect and Spirit. And remember, if a Jewel Crafter's done their quest, their first quest they get as a Jewel Crafter in Northrend, they can craft these into perfect gems, which are 
very close to blues. At Revered, you can get some 187 items such as a dagger with armor, pen, and attack power, a healing mace with haste and spell power, or a pole arm with hit and attack power, which could be particularly good for a druid if you haven't got anything better. But all of these, again, are only 187 item level and will be replaced very, very quickly in heroics. But you can get the 28 slot leather working bag and a pattern for a 32 slot herb bag for tailors. But most people will be doing the Kalowak to get the Kalowak fishing pole, which gives you 30 fishing skill and allows you to breathe underwater. It's it's not amazing, but you're probably going to want to do it just so you've got an epic fishing pole. You do also get a pet, which is obviously going to go towards your pet achievement. Over in Sholazar Basin, you've got two reputations, the Oracles and the Frenzy Heart Tribe. Looking at the Oracles first, you can get a hit and stamina gem recipe. To get reputation with these guys, it is running dailies for either the Oracles or the Frenzy Heart. While you're doing your dailies, you can get an Oracle Secret Solution, which grants you a chance to deal poison damage and increase movement speed by 5% for 30 minutes. Can only be used in Sholazar Basin, though. At Honored, there's just some food. Really Really exciting. At Revered, there's some items. They're all 187 eye level. So again, you're not going to be too bothered about this reputation for the items at Revered, but you do get a cloth healing belt if you've got nothing better with stamina, intellect, spirit, and spell power. A leather belt with attack power and armor pen. A male healing or cast a DPS head. A hunter or enhancement shaman head with attack power crit agility, stamina, and intellect, a tanking shoulder with parry, a DPS shoulder with crit, a spell power and crit wand, which again is not too bad, and you can get the crit strike and mana per five gem recipe. The big thing here is the mysterious egg, which you can buy from them every seven days, and it takes seven days to hatch, and it can hatch into a Reigns of the Green Proto Drake. There's also a few companion pets that it can actually hatch into, or aged yolk if you're really unlucky. But Reigns of the Green Proto Drake is really what you're hoping your Mysterious Egg hatches into. Finally, you can get a trinket that gives you critical strike rating by 71 and it restores mana, rage, energy, or runic power when you kill a target that grants honor or experience. I've done a trinket video recently, I'll put a link in the description, and I spoke about this being probably the best farming trinket, and they're not unique, so you can use two of them. So constantly just getting mana, energy, rage, whatever, you know, after each kill from two trinkets pretty strong. The Frenzy Heart is not quite as good in my opinion, but you get a design for the 7 spell power and 6 haste gem recipe for the jewel crafters. There's some random roasted mystery beast and you get the Nepeta Leaf or Nepeta Leaf, whatever it is, increasing damage by 5% and movement speed by 5%. So this is just the Frenzy Hearts version of what we already looked at with the Oracles. And the same applies with the items as well. They are slightly different, but they're all only 187 item level. So you can get some spell power cloth gloves. You can get some attack power hit leather leggings, but they are only like item level 174. You can get some male spell power haste legs, some tanking gloves, which are actually not too bad with dodge and hit, some holy paladin gloves with crit and spell power, some holy paladin legs, the frenzy heart like holy paladins apparently, with spell power and crit, or a thrown weapon with attack power and haste. But just to reiterate, we're not bothered about any of these items really. We're going to get to the factions next with the items that we're bothered about. You can get the crit stamina gem design as well here, and you can get a disgusting jar. Now, the disgusting jar, unfortunately, doesn't ferment into a mount like the egg hatches into for the oracles, but you can get frenzy heart brew, which brings out the wolvar in you with a 30 minute cooldown. You can get some healing potions, mana potions, rejuve potions, or some mysterious fermented liquid, which is just an extremely potent alcoholic beverage so i'd say there's definitely more reason to go oracles you know because you've got a chance at getting a mount going frenzy heart the trinket's not bad which we'll look at now which improves your haste by 71 and upon killing a creature you grow furious increasing your chance to critically strike for the next 10 seconds that can be quite useful and it's a lot of haste and it will be a lot of crit but personally i would prefer getting resources back after every kill so you never need to stop. Now, Ashen Verdict, I'm not going to talk about, but I will talk about it in a future video. But just in case you're wondering, Ashen Verdict is all about ICC and it's just rings. So we can worry about that a lot closer to the ICC phase. But let's start with Wormrest Accord. So like I explained at the start of the video, at Friendly, you'll be able to get the Tabard. This is the same for all of the factions we're going to look at now. And as you can see, all reputation gains won in level 80 dungeons will be applied to your standing with them. So with them being Wormrest Accord. At Honored, you're going to get 187 items. At Revered, you're going to get 200 items, and at Exalted, you're going to get 200 epic items. As well as, at Revered, for each one of them, each one of these four reputations we're about to talk about, you'll get your head enchant, depending on your role. So at Honored with these, you're going to get a nice tanking cloak with defense and hit, 31 strength and 64 stamina. You'll be able to get a nice caster belt with hit and spell power. You'll be able to get some nice paladin wrists with haste, spell power, and a yellow socket to be able to put 16 intellect in. Be able to get a nice one-handed sword with 1.5 speed, ideal for the offhand if you're combat, with attack power and hit. And for the worm rest accord, you can get 25 arcane resist and 30 stamina on a head slot. Each of the reputations, including Sons of Hodir and the four that we're going to talk about now, all give a different school of magic 
plus 30 stamina for a head slot. So at Revered, these are where the items are going to start picking up a little bit. So you can get some cloth wrists with spell power and a socket. These have got 31 stamina, 33 intellect, and 27 spirit. You can get a tanking chest with 76 defense rating, which is huge, and 56 expertise rating. This is a particularly strong tanking chest for pre-raid. You can also get tanking boots with defense and hit. So you can see straight away as a prop warrior or potentially a prop paladin, going for revered with worm rest accord first, even though it's actually where you get your healing head enchant from, can be strong because you're going to get two items straight away and for healers you can also get a crit haste spell power weapon with 49 stamina and 26 intellect and as i was just saying the 30 spell power and 10 mana per five head enchant comes from here at revered and you can get a 32 slot enchanting bag if you're a tailor well you can get a pattern for it and then at exalted if you're a spellcaster, you're going to get haste spell power boots with 50 intellect 49 stamina and a blue socket if you want some crit attack power leather braces with 49 agility and 38 stamina you can get these at exalted as well you can get some mal hands with 48 intellect 57 stamina 33 mp5 which is big and 77 spell power and you can get some plate dps legs with 90 armor pen 117 stamina and 96 strength you also get reigns of the red drake which is just a typical red drake it's only 280 speed it's not a 310 speed mount and it's only for one person finally there is a parry and defense rate in gem recipe as well which comes from exalted the thing worth noting here is if you was a shaman for example a resto shaman by getting exalted with these first, from this one reputation alone, you could potentially use the wrists temporarily for healing, even though they're cloth. You could use the mace. You could use the boots with haste, spell power, stamina, and intellect. Of course, you'll get the hands as well. So you could really get like four items just from this one reputation, which is not bad, really. Even though, you know, they're not all perfectly itemized. But if we're talking about getting upgrades quick and you're going to get your head enchanter revered, Worm Rest Accord for a Resto Shaman could be particularly strong then moving on to the kirin tour you get your tabard at friendly as we know then are honored with the 187 items you're going to get a haste and spell power cape which has got 46 spell power and 38 haste with 28 stamina and 29 intellect you can get a leather head with 26 mp5 and 78 spell power it's got no meta socket which is a shame but still could be a good starter you can get some crit attack power resilience mal shoulders with agility stamina and intellect you can get a 1.4 speed dagger with 29 agility haste and attack power and this is where you get your fire resistance and stamina head slot enchant at revered where you start to get the better items you've got expertise attack power leather legs which are particularly nice you can get a crit spell power plate waist with an extra gem socket in so when you put your belt buckle in this as well you're going to get two gem slots where you could put 16 intellect in both of them as a holy paladin you get a nice dps dagger with crit hit and 355 spell power 33 intellect and 28 stamina could be a very good starting weapon for any cast that it can use a dagger, really. And then there's a nice druid tanking staff, which has got 315 armor, 117 stamina, attack power, and dodge. This particular reputation is where the casters pick up their head enchant with 30 spell power and 20 crit rating. At Exalted, you can get some haste spell power MP5 robes. These are cloth robes, obviously. But with the haste and the mana per five, these could be pretty useful for a resto shaman. You get a level waste with crit and spell power and a socket. Anyone other than your priest would be able to use this to heal with 10 temporarily get some mal boots for the hunters and enhancement shamans with agility stamina intellect 58 haste and 66 attack power and some tanking gloves with defense and dodge rating the last couple of bits one that's going to be very important early on for dual crafters you'll be able to get your 19 spell power gem design and an important one for tailors this is where you're going to get your spell power and stamina sapphire spell thread now again this sort of reputation is good for many classes getting to revered as a feral tank could be particularly useful as a resto druid a shaman a paladin you know there's so many item options here for let's say a holy paladin because not only are you going to get a healing waste you could technically use the robes for the time being there's a few items there which you could get nice and quick moving on to knights of the even blade at friendly of course you get your tabard and dual crafters will get the agility and crit design deadly huge citrine at honored spellcasters can get a nice hit spell power cape tanks can get a nice defense and block value pair of boots for anyone who wants to use an armor pen fist weapon you can get it it's only 187 eye level you can get the 28 slot quiver from here if you're a level worker and this particular one gives 25 nature resist and 30 stamina for the head slot now where the items actually get good you can get some cloth hands with 49 stamina 58 intellect 41 spirit and 68 spell power there's some nice spell power wrists for leather users with spirit and spell power mal shoulders with agility stamina intellect crit and attack power very very nice one-handed swords specifically for frost dks because it's very slow nice and slow speeds which you're going to want in both hands in fact these are probably the best weapons you're going to get for quite a while so going for revered as a dk first 
definitely advisable. Rune Blade of Demonstratable Power for a two-hand. This could be used by, well, hunters, anyone really, but it's got nice agility, attack power, crit and haste. The 16 attack power and 8 crit gem design you get from here at Revered. All attack power-based DPS, hunters, ferals, rogues, rets, whatever, will be able to get their 50 attack power and 20 crit head enchant. The 32 slot soul bag also comes from here for tailors. And then when we move on to Exalted, the big items, keep saying bigger, the bigger items. You've got Belt of Dark Mending, which is haste and spell power on waste with 50 intellect and 64 stamina. You've got the Dark Heart Chest Guard with 88 agility, 67 stamina, a big amount of attack power and armor pen. You've got a nice Mal MP5 spell power legs and some very nice DPS boots for strength users with two sockets and a huge amount of crit. Finally, a spell power and stamina design glowing twilight opal for jewel crafters. You can see the strength of some of the melee based items or, you know, hunters, attack power users here. It could be particularly useful because for a rep paladin, for example, maybe you want to use the two handed sword. You could get away with using the Mal shoulders. You're going to get some really nice DPS boots. You potentially, in the meantime, if you haven't got anything better, could even use the chest. DKs, you're definitely going to want to get the weapons. The boots will probably be an upgrade compared to what you're using early on. And, of course, anyone who uses a tap power is going to want the head enchant. The final one, Argent Crusade. I'll skip over the tabard bit. At Honored, you're going to get an agility, stamina, armor pen, and attack power cape. Some tanking legs with a socket, 102 stamina, 69 defense, and 46 hit. These legs for a 187 are not too bad at all. And of course, what reputation would be a reputation without the Holy Paladins getting something? So they've got their spell power and haste legs with an extra socket. And these are actually particularly nice for a 187 eye level. At Revered, where they pick up and get a bit better, you've got a Mal head with 60 intellect, 91 spell power and 77 crit an armor pen head with 89 strength and 87 stamina for the melee dps or the strength based melee dps a two-handed mace with strength stamina and 77 armor pen the zombie sweeper shotgun with crit hit and attack power and it's 2.9 speed a nice spell power mp5 wand shame that it lacks on spirit or intellect but got a decent amount of stamina the expertise stamina gem recipe for the jewel crafters and this of course at revered is where the tank heading charts come from with 37 stamina and 20 defense rating at exalted the big items you're going to get the boots are absolutely amazing for any agility based dps with 66 hit and 122 attack power 51 agility, 49 stamina. The chest, which is very nice for hunters and enhancement shamans, with 89 agility, 69 stamina, 68 intellect, a gem socket with the socket bonus of 4 hit rating, which is nice. A nice amount of hit on it anyway, with 49 and 104 attack power. And then, of course, another holy paladin head. So this is a very nice head this time. It's got a meta socket, though, with a meta socket, a blue socket, spell power crit and a nice amount of intellect and stamina the first epic ring you're going to see from a reputation giving you 42 stamina 50 intellect 36 haste and 58 spell power pretty much every healer is going to want to get this fairly quick and if you're a tailor you're absolutely going to want to get the pattern for spell power and spirit so 50 spell power and 20 spirit from the brilliant spell thread because you're going to be selling these all day long and as you can see we've covered every reputation here except for the ashen verdict which we'll get into at a later date. I hope you found it useful. I hope you took some notes and you've got an idea of what you're going to do first, what reputation you're going to focus on first. I will be doing a video advising you in the very near future on what reputations to focus on first. So be sure to like, smash the like button. Even if you didn't like it, just, just like it anyway. Why not? Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content and roll the outro. There's lots of ways you can support the channel to keep me here putting out World of Warcraft content and covering all future MMOs. Consider joining the channel as a member you get access to emotes. Everyone will know you're a member when you comment on future videos because you get a nice icon next to your name. And you get access to members-only videos, which I'll be putting a lot of on the channel throughout the year. Additionally, there's a Patreon link in the description as well. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you on the next one.